Good morning. I'm David Phillips, CEO of Estate Planning Specialist. Uh, I'll start that again. Good morning. I'm Dave Phillips with Estate Planning Specialist, and it really is good to be here in Las Vegas. We're going to talk about my one of my favorite topics that reference estate planning, and that's the family bank strategy. I love the idea of creating a bank that is my family's bank, that my ba my family can literally bank on and make sure that it's there. Um, can anybody tell me what these three iconic businesses have in common? Besides their businesses, that's not fair. In fact, if you can tell me, I will give you a copy of my book. You already have one, but uh, we're going to give you a copy of my book, The Ten Most Common Estate Planning Mistakes. Amy, tell me what these three businesses have in common. They all make a lot of money, that's true. That's not it. Okay, well, interesting enough, they all used life insurance to fund their business. Walt Disney, when no, one, no, no, when no bank would give him a dime, used borrowed money from his life insurance policy to start Disneyland. Ray Kroc actually used it to help fund McDonald's when he was struggling, when it was struggling business, and he used his life insurance, took a loan out from his life insurance policy. And the, I love this one here. Daisy Doris Christopher, Pampered Chef, started Pampered Chef with a loan from her life insurance policy and seven years later sold it to Warren Buffett for $1.5 billion. Pretty cool, huh? Well, I'm going to tell you a story about my investment success by using my life insurance a little bit in a little while. Have any of you heard of these particular uh, marketing strategies? Anybody heard of any of these? The infinite banking, bank on yourself. Anybody read Stansberry, listen to talk radio? This is going on all day, 24-7 right now. And it's become a very, very popular thing. In fact, two of my favorite books on the issue, Bank on Yourself Revolution by Pam Yellen and The Retirement Miracle by Pat Kelly. I mean, both really, really good books, totally different ideas, but the same concept of using life insurance to create wealth. It's the, it, they say, they claim it's a secret. It's not a secret. It's simply life insurance. A duck is a duck, is a duck, is a duck. No matter what color it is, what, how you paint it, it's still a duck. And life insurance is still life insurance. But I need to un you need to understand that the life insurance that these folks are recommending and marketing and pushing and screaming from the roo rooftops, literally is what they, they claim, is permanent life insurance. And specifically, the ones that I want to focus on today is variable life insurance, I'm sorry, is whole life insurance and indexed universal life. We call it, they call it different things, infinite banking, whatever, we call it the family bank strategy. And the reason why we do this is because most of our clients are estate planning clients. They are tired of the tax regime that's going on right now. They're tired of paying taxes time and time again. And they've got assets and they've got money that they want to put in a safe money vehicle. And they want to get it out of risk, but they don't want to continue to pay the taxes. And life insurance is a vehicle that was created specifically for my clients, my clients that have wealth. The infinite banking ideas and the bank on yourselves, they focus mostly on the 45-year-old that's accumulating wealth. My clients already have wealth, and they're tired of paying the taxes. It's not new. It's not revolutionary. It's not this financial hidden secret that some of them will tell you it is. It's not. It's been around for a long time. In fact, for 160 years. And I have been recommending it for 42 of those 160 years. It's an important part of our economy. It certainly is an important asset that you need to have. And frankly, recently, in recent years, the stars have aligned to make logical sense of this strategy, the family bank strategy. And in fact, the time has come to bring it out, to not keep it under the mat, to bring it out and make it a vital part of your investment strategies. It's so critical, it's so important that how many of you have watched Ed Slot on PBS? Okay. Well, Ed Slot is the 
um, at least self-acclaimed guru of IRAs. And you, he's awesome, isn't he? He's a great speaker. And uh, he, he recently in a PBS program was quoted as saying, tax exemption for life insurance is the single biggest benefit in the tax code. Now this is from a CPA who has no ax to grind, does not get any insurance commissions or anything like that. He just, this is, he stated a fact. The next thing he said was life insurance is the only way to legally print money. And I'm gonna explain how that goes, but life insurance has, was, has been given some bennies that nothing else has, okay? And it falls under this, this umbrella that life insurance is all about and is under this umbrella. But I'm specifically uh, talking, re re referencing the tax treatment now of permanent life insurance. And this is preferential tax treatment for it. The first is the, interesting, the uh, 16th Amendment. Of course, we all know that as the income tax amendment. But interesting enough, of all of the assets that were listed as being taxed, life insurance was not going to, was not listed. In fact, the life insurance benefits that went to beneficiaries was thought to be such a major social good that it was blessed and the proceeds were to be able to receive tax free, income tax free. And then in later uh, in uh, section 70, 702 of the Internal Revenue Code, it was established that the life insurance buildup, cash value buildup inside a life insurance policy was also under that umbrella and also tax free. Not tax deferred now, tax free. And it was later codified in 1984 with the DEFRA Tax Act and subsequently in 2006, we received another blessing that life insurance proceeds from a, if you were in a situation where you could not perform two of the six activities of daily living or you became cognitively impaired, could be distributed to you, the insured, federal estate tax free. That's key. So not only do you have the inside buildup tax free, the life insurance benefit tax free, you also have the life insurance benefit being distributed to the insured tax-free if they can't do two of the six ADLs or cognitive impairment. This is big, this is huge. So life insurance has this preferential tax treatment. And one of the reasons why that is important, of course, is because taxes are on the increase, they're on the rise, we know that. The deficit has to be paid. And as long as we are in, in the vehicle where it's tax-free, it doesn't really matter to us. Life insurance, now this is the, what I'm explaining is why the stars have aligned, why this is the perfect time, because life insurance every day pays out $1.5 billion to families every day. And that's huge, so it's a social good. One out of every $5 of America's long-term savings are invested in life insurance and annuities. So they're extremely vital to the economy as well and they are among the strongest financial institutions in the world. Another reason why the stars have aligned to make it is because of the market, term, market turmoil. Now, I'm not just referencing the stock market. I'm talking about the real estate market as well. I know how that's affected us in Arizona. It's been huge. We've lost a lot of money there. Americans since 2000 have lost 49% of their stock portfolios twice. Where is the stock market going from where it is today? You need to take some of your money, take some chips off the table, and put it into a safe harbor. With life insurance, there's no Bernie Madoffs. You are dealing with the strongest financial institutions directly. You don't have to worry about that. And because of the low fixed environment, anything over 1% compared to a CD or a money market account is good. Well, we're talking on average five to eight percent year after year after year after year. Now, I realize that's kind of boring, but it's not for all of your money either. But it is there, safe, guaranteed, coming out every year, five to eight percent every year. 
Another reason why the stars have aligned is because of the gift allowances. We now have the 14,000 a year. We've already talked about this in our earlier talk about the leveraging of using that gift. But the important thing is that you also have the lifetime exclusion and you can use some of that to shift assets into an insurance policy that will then be accumulating tax free. And in my opinion, the best products that have ever, ever been offered to the public are there and available right now. The best, absolutely best. Um, and before I kind of get into the best of what, what they are, I need, to need, need you to understand that in 1984, Congress passed a law called the DEFRA Tax Act. And in that law, they established a limit as to how much you could put into life insurance. Now, my experience of 42 years, years as a financial ad, uh, advisor is simple this, simply this. If the IRS puts a cap on something, it's pretty dang good. They don't want you to take advantage of them, and therefore they put a limit as to how much you can put into it. And they did. And this limit, for our discussion purposes today, is called the, the MEC limit. And if we stay below that MEC limit, we receive all of the tax-free benefits that I have just mentioned, the tax-free accumulation, the tax-free distribution, the tax-free life insurance component to our beneficiaries. All of that remains tax-free if we stay under the limit. And it's at a very generous limit. Now, most of you are familiar with term insurance. Term insurance is on the low end. It's a very one-dimensional, put in premium, if I die, my family gets money, correct? What's the problem with term insurance? I, and, and by the way, I owned insurance quote services for 20 plus years. I love term insurance, but what's the problem with it? It expires, it's right. In fact, only 2% of term insurance policies ever are paid out on a claim. So 98% goes to the house. Not a real good return on investment. Um, permanent insurance is permanent. It stays with you forever. And about five years ago, and for about a 10-year run, there was a real, real big emphasis in what's called the wealth creation strategy. And I love it. And it's still there today, but it's not as big of a push because the estate tax exclusion is now at $5.34 million. But what I saw was a lot of people saying, wow, I need a lot of coverage, and I want to pay the least amount of money. It's called max coverage, minimum premium. And that's, you can see this on the slide here in the very middle, the typical permanent insurance is structured that way, where you have a very little gain uh, in, in the accumulation account. Most of the money that you're going in, the, is it like a term, it's like a permanent term policy. Okay, you, you gather what I'm saying? In fact, it termed to 100 or termed to 121, and it's, and it's good, it's really good, it creates wealth. But again, it's very one-dimensional. Pay a premium, receive benefit for your, for your family, not you. There's nothing, there's no dynamics in between. If you focus on the family bank strategy and you focus on taking advantage of the tax laws that are there that allow you to accumulate tax-free wealth and you put, stuff the policy, we call it stuffing the policy, with as much cash as you possibly can to avoid the MEC limit, to not go beyond the MEC limit, then you get all the advantages of the tax-free all the way throughout. And the policies today are pretty savvy. They, uh, or carriers are pretty savvy, and they make sure that your policy does not violate that MEC limit. Um, and if it does, if it starts to violate it, what happens? Your face amount of your policy starts to increase. It's pretty cool. So it always stays under that MEC limit but you're able to stuff the policy with as much money as you possibly can to receive all the tax-free status. Now, if you're doing a contributory plan where you're putting in it year after year, of course, it's the same rule of compound interest. At first, there's not much gain because you're not putting much in and, you're not, and, you, and your dollars are not being slaves to you. But eventually, your dollars become your slave and they work for you and the compound interest over simple interest is huge. And we call this the hockey stick effect. So it has a, 
a substantial increase in later years because you're compounding, you're using dollars and dollars and dollars to compound and build tax-free. So those of you that um, are, have been in, in you know, you know, and I am assuming that some of you have been in this battle. How many of you have heard of the infinite banking or income for life ideas or the, and any of you heard of this? Okay, I've got a few of you. This is a battle that's going on right now. It's, a, it's kind of a raging battle. And the question is really what is best? What, what plan is best? Because they're all under the section 7702 and section 101 of the Internal Revenue Code and the, and the, uh, uh, the 16th Amendment, and so these are all under the tax code, but which is better, the participating whole life or the newer version indexed universal life, which is better? Well, for you, I'm not really sure. I think it's an individual decision. Most of these guys that are, doing, that are marketing uh, the life insurance in this way are pushing one or the other. And I don't believe that's true. I think everybody is different. Everybody is unique. And that's one of the reasons why you need to stop by in the Salerno room, fill out the evaluation form, get the golden ticket, get my book, sign up to receive my book, The Family Bank Strategy, this book here. This is, like I said, it'll be out in a month. And that book will, that book will have all of the stuff that I'm talking to you about in here. And also get, order an illustration so you can see what it would look like for you and have both of them Set, set down and laid down side by side. Why would I do this? Because I get the tax-free accumulation, tax-free distribution, and I create an instant estate. Let me give you an example. I need to grab my pointer. Hold on one second. This is key because, as you, let's just look at, and we, this, is our, this will be our last two slides so we can culminate with this. But let's just say we, are, we have a female that is age 65, and she's in pretty good health. And you can see over here that her premium to create a million dollars is 34000 Now this is, not the, this is not the wealth creation one that I was telling you about where there's no cash value. There is some cash value because you can see in, um, in the, I can, can't hardly see it myself over here, but over there it's 30, 328000 Is that correct? Did I have the pointer on the right spot there? 328,000 in 10 years. So she put in over the 10 years, 340,000, 10, 10, uh, 34,000 over 10 years. So her money is basically back. She's got it, she's, she's, she's solid. She doesn't put any more money in ever again though, that's done. So what is her return no matter what happens when she dies, what's the return on the investment? So three to one, right? For every dollar she puts in, she gets three bucks back because she gets a million dollar death benefit. You see that up here? This is the million dollars. And that's an instant benefit. So had she died in the first day, her family would have received a million dollars. Question, what are the taxes on that million dollars? Zero, you guys are getting it, this is good, okay? What about the estate taxes on the million dollars? Zero if you set it up right. You have to establish the, the plan right. I just have a gentleman that's doing this he has two children. We decided to not put it into a trust because he only had two kids. So the kids own the policies. Okay, but they have full control of the cash values. So if they needed the money, so if, we, if 10 years from now, one of the grandkids comes up to you and says, hey grandpa, I need $50,000 to go to school. This is your bank. This is your family bank. This is where you're gonna take the money out. And how much do you have to pay on the money you take out for the family bank to give to the child, your grandchild to go to school. How much income tax do you have to pay on it? Zero. How cool is that? So I accumulate it tax-free and I take it out tax-free. Not too long ago I had a plan, have a plan that's very similar to this. I needed $50,000 for an investment my CPA introduced me to. Is there in Gilbert where our offices are. I drove by the place all the time. The, you know, it was just raw land. And he said, Dave, I need 10 investors and I need $50,000 tonight. I could have taken it out of cash flow, but I didn't really want to. I could have borrowed it from the bank, but then I had to pay interest to the bank. So I took it out of my life insurance policy. How much taxes did I have to pay to get it out of my life insurance policy? Zero. 
How much did I have to pay the insurance company because I'm actually using my money as collateral for a loan? Because I'm borrowing from the insurance company, but I'm using my cash value as collateral. Well, the insurance company charges me 4% for the loan, but they credit me 4% on that side of the money. So how much do I have to pay the insurance company for my loan? Zero. So do I have to pay it back? Well, not really. I could die, and my million dollar policy would be $950,000 to my kids, minus the loan. But I did pay it back, because guess what? I took that $50,000, and my, my accountant was a genius. Eight times in eight months. That's how I parlayed it. Walgreens, Long John Silver, and I think Taco Bell all went in. Right then, they bought the property. How cool was that? Tax free, I put the money back in the policy, it's still whole today, a million dollar policy. Well anyway, let's get back to my example. So here we have a 65 year old female accumulating this money. Now what if though, I decided, now this is kind of like the middle of the road version. This is, not the, this is not the stuffing. What if I decided to stuff the policy? So we put in here $79,000 instead of the 34, so we double our deposit for 10 years. So we're putting in 790,000. But look what it does to the cash value. $998,000, so it tripled the cash value, and I only doubled my investment. And, and I'm not putting any more premium in, it's almost worth $2 million at age, in, in, at age 85. Now, the key to this is that this money is accumulating tax-free. It's a family bank. If somebody needs the money to start a new business, a Ray Kroc, McDonald's, or a Pampered Chef, or J.C. Penney's, or whatever, these guys all use life insurance. They borrowed money from their insurance policies to start these businesses. Who knows what's out there with your family, with your kids? This is your bank that you're creating. Now, somebody said to me, well, David, I can't qualify for insurance. I'm sick. I'm too sick. First of all, if you can even breathe, you could pretty well get this insurance. And we really don't care if you're, in, if you're rated because that's just going to increase the contribution and the accumulation. But if that, does, if that doesn't look good to us after we do the evaluation, you can insure your wife. You can insure your children. You can insure your grandchildren. Why would I do that? Tax-free wealth accumulation. That's why. Okay? The insurance can be secondary. I don't believe it needs to be secondary. Most of these other uh, marketing organizations say that life insurance is, the, is not even a good thing. You want to not even have life insurance. But you can't do that because that's the golden goose. That's what's giving us the tax-free status is the life insurance. That's what gives us the umbrella. So what's the solution? Solution is to sit with us, have us show you how this works. It's a marvelous miracle right now. The stars have aligned to make this a perfect time for you to look at, seriously take a close look at, look under the hood and see how this works for you and see if it applies to you. We will be here. Salerno room is right across the hallway. You fill out your evaluation form to myself up here or Ron in the back, and you'll get the golden ticket. The golden ticket, you'll be able to come into our room anytime today and tomorrow and get the 10 most common estate planning mistakes booklet, this booklet right here, or this book, I mean, not a booklet. Get this book free at no cost, you, or you can go to Amazon and buy it for $14.95, so that's your choice, okay? Um, but make sure that you f do that, and then if you want to have your estate analyzed and have us help you on this concept or the estate planning, fill out the uh, evaluation form, check that you are interested in that, and make sure that you, you uh, pick out the set of time for, to sit with me while I'm here today and tomorrow. Thank you so very much.